Good morning, neighbors. Let's sing this song together, shall we? It's an old hymn by Charles Tindley, who a few days ago I sang one of his other songs called Stand By Me. Nothing between my soul and the Savior, not of this world's delusive dream. I have renounced all sinful pleasure. Jesus is mine. There's nothing between, nothing between my soul and the Savior. So that his blessed face may be seen, nothing preventing the least of his favor. Keep the way clear, let nothing be tween, nothing be tween like worldly pleasure, habits of life. Though harmless they seem, must not my heart from him ever sever. He is my all. There's nothing between, nothing between my soul and the Savior, so that his blessed face may be seen. Nothing preventing. The least of his favor, keep the way clear, let nothing be tween. Nothing be tween, like pride or station, self or friends shall not intervene, though it may cost me much tribulation. I am resolved, there's nothing between, nothing between my soul and the Savior, so that his blessed face may be seen, nothing preventing the least of his favor, keep the way clear, let nothing be tween. Nothing between in many hard trials, though the whole world against me can be watching with prayer and much self denial. I'll triumph at last with nothing between. Nothing between my soul and the Savior, so that his blessed face may be seen. Nothing preventing the least of his favor, keep the way clear, let nothing be tween. Nothing between. I like that song, and as I got to that last line, I never really thought of it so much before, I guess, but it says, I'll triumph at last with nothing between, and that is really our goal, but I like triumph at last, you know, at, at last, you know, at the end, finally, maybe, I'll get to the point where there's nothing between, you know, we have so many of the natural cares and weaknesses, and because we're just humans in a sinless, in a sin, or a, in a sin-filled world, you know, serving a sinless Savior, trying to emulate Him, but we do have tests and trials, and we fall down, but this man, as he wrote this, other, there's a lot of wisdom in this, you know, nothing between my soul and the Savior, not of this, nothing of this world's delusive dream, these, this world's not even how it's supposed to be, it's a, in a fallen state, but it deludes you it, it 
fascinates you and it, and it brings you kind of into, oh, you know, I need these things. I need great wealth, money, power, or even the small things, you know, and you fall into lusts and jealousies and all these and lies and all these stuff. He says, I have renounced all sinful pleasure. You know, I, I am saying that I, I renounce. I don't want that. But the temptation is still there. And, you know, habits of life, though harmless they seem, must not my heart from him ever sever. You know, these things may seem harmless, but if they're severing my heart from him, because he is my all. Self and friends shall not intervene. Pride or station in this life shall not intervene. Though it may cost me much tribulation. You know, people are going to turn on you. I am resolved. You know, I've decided. Then finally he says, though in many hard trials, though the whole world comes against me, Watching with prayer and much self-denial. I'll triumph at last. You know, we, it is, and that's what we're going to talk about. And what I actually spoke on at church this past week, uh, self-denial. You know, are we living in a, a state of denial? You know, and and, it's kind of, and I'd kind of use a play on word, but we're going to go with what I said Sunday night. Uh, self-denial. You know, are you living like that? You know, knowing, because this is what the Savior did. In Luke chapter 22 and verse uh, 39, coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed, and his disciples all followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. You know, Jesus Christ, he, he himself is going to pray because he knows what he's about to face on the cross and the, having the sins of the world poured upon him. And he's telling them, you know, you need to pray, you know, so that you don't fall into temptation. Because you you can fall in it because it's very difficult to get through. Remember, Jesus himself, he went out to the wilderness and was tempted by uh, by Satan. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. You know, that is something that's very difficult to say. You know, it's easy to read and easy to kind of apply it while you're reading it. Because we know Jesus is doing this, but he is crying out to his father, Father, you know, if it's possible, please take this cup away from me. Don't make me suffer like this. But nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. You know, and if you've ever had you've suffered tragic loss in your life, as I have, it is a difficult prayer to pray because you want what you want so badly. You know, how can you say, Lord, this, this can't be your will. This can't be, you know. But Jesus is saying, you know, if, it, if it's possible, could you please take the, you know, God, with all God, all things are possible. But not my will, but thine be done. If this is what's going to, it's going to take to this, to justify the world and bring, and bring salvation. And it says, then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. He needed to strengthen. That's how difficult it was to, to go this route, you know, and to face what he's about to face. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. You know, so he's already praying, crying out to God, not my will, but thine be yours be done. Lord, help me. An angel comes to him and still being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. So this angel will strengthen him to keep praying earnestly. Oh, Lord, help me. This is the ultimate in self-denial. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. When he rose up from prayer and had come to his disciples, he found them sleeping from sorrow. And he said to them, why do you sleep? Rise and pray lest you enter into temptation. That's how easy it is for us to fall, you know, and uh, not deny ourselves. You know, I'm tired, you know, and I'm going through a lot. I just need my rest. This is what I want. And there's nothing to be ashamed of that we are tempted, you know, or, or, or that we are like the Apostle Paul. He was this great apostle, used mightily in the, in the first church age messenger and all these things, and yet, he was saying, there's a war within my members. You know, there's a war within me because the things I want to do, I know I shouldn't do. The things I should do, I don't do. You know, I'm always, we are in this fallen state. Though we have salvation, we are still, you know, in this corrupted body and temptations and these things, these voices come to us. And Paul is acknowledging, you know, I'm saved. I'm, there's grace abounding the chief of sinners, you know, and he has the gift of the Holy Ghost. He's using all these miracles. And still he says, but I'm at war within myself. You know, there, there's to deny yourself is a very difficult thing and to do what he has commanded. So then we'll read in 
So we'll stay in Luke 9, uh, 23. This is talking about the cost of discipleship. Then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. What does the word deny even mean? Deny means to say it's not true. And he said, you know what? You have to deny yourself. What you have to realize is my longings and all these things, they're not lined up with the gospel and the truth. I have to line myself up with the truth. It's the word, it's the word that will set me free. But so you have to acknowledge, you know what? I'm weak and I came forth speaking lies. The heart is evil and deceptively wicked. The tongue is like a terrible fire that will burn buildings down. You know, it even says, you know, a horse, you can put a bridle in its mouth and guide it around. A ship, you can take like this little rudder, you know, and you can do these things. Well, that's how the tongue is. It just sends you out to all these weird directions and craziness. And, you know, in our minds and all these things, we're just, and our emotions, they get in the mix and to deny ourselves. And he said, you need to deny yourself. You have to deny these things and follow after me and the truth. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory, and in his Father's and of the holy angels. You know, he's telling you, you're going to have to deny yourself and take up the cross. That's what he's saying. This is what I did, and you're not greater than your master. You have to deny yourself. And the thing is, Jesus Christ was sinless. We're sinners. Yeah, and we've been saved, but... We are still in a constant battle fighting against that old nature. So today, be encouraged in the fight. He can give you that strength to be an overcomer, but you really have to lean on him and take it to the truth and to his word and say, Lord, help me and help me to follow this. So God bless you. And we just pray for you all that we can all win the battle and be home soon. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.